Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to a final Murph Plays The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for Nintendo Switch. I'm Murph Strange, and this is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for the Nintendo Switch. And our final session for the franchise playthrough. Now, this isn't the last time you're going to see Breath of the Wild on this channel. I just want to clarify that right now. But this is the last time you will see it as part of the franchise playthrough. Hey, Knitting Link. I'm doing well. How about yourself? We're just getting started today. And, as I was saying, uh, this is going to be our final session on Breath of the Wild, but only as part of the regular franchise playthrough. We're going to go to random games on Fridays, and as I had said previously, this game will be added to our uh, random assortment. Doing good? That's great to hear. And today, I think what we're going to do is just take it easy and relax and try to find some star fragments. Uh, it's been a long week. It's been a really long week. Not a bad week. Not, not, uh, you know, just we've, we've had a lot of work to do around the house here. It's been super, super busy. Um... Spring cleaning is going incredibly well. Uh, we're nearing the end of the week, and our city is actually doing, like, furniture pickup and stuff, free, free curb pickup this weekend for any, like, excess furniture and stuff that people are looking to get rid of. Uh, normally, they charge a fee for picking up that kind of stuff, but this weekend, it's free. So we're all uh, trying to get everything. We're just looking to unload out to the curb. And that's it. That's everything else is done. We're, um, we're done with everything. So uh, after an exhausting week, it's nice to just relax with a... Uh, With a mellow, uh, mellow playthrough. Nice little, uh, easy going session today. Now, uh, we are going to continue playing Zelda games, though. We have so many Zelda games to get through. And if rumors I'm hearing are true, we're going to have so many more Zelda games to get through. <laughs> um, I don't know if uh, I don't know if you've seen the articles, 
But something I'm excited about, and I'm hoping it's true, but allegedly, Nintendo will be bringing Wind Waker and Twilight Princess in HD to the Switch this fall. And uh, it's basically a, hey, we uh, we understand people might be a little disappointed. We've had to put Breath of the Wild 2 off until next year. Uh, here's a consolation prize. I'm okay with it. If it happens, of course, I will be playing them. And, of course, I will be streaming that playthrough because, you know, we haven't done Wind Waker or Twilight Princess on this channel yet. And, uh... Wind Waker is, uh... Wind Waker is an amazing game. Twilight Princess is incredibly awesome. Um... We're gonna want to get through those. We're gonna want to play those. So, of course... That's going to be something we'll be doing. Like, even if it doesn't get released by Nintendo this fall, if that's just a rumor, we're still going to play them. We're just going to have to play them on the GameCube and the Nintendo Wii, respectively. Because, you know, that's what I have to work with. But, I also have Skyward Sword. Which, of all the games to release on the Switch, uh, Skyward Sword, that's kind of a weird one. Hey, Ube, welcome to the chat. I really hope those rumors are true, too. Um, they're allegedly from, uh, someone on the inside, someone who knows what they're talking about. Uh, supposedly this is a thing they've been working on for... A while and it should be happening sometime this fall so we just got to make it through uh, we just got to make it through uh, through summer and uh, I'm pretty sure we'll find plenty of content to kill time with um, between now and then but uh, 2023 We'll be looking at Breath of the Wild 2, and when that comes out, I definitely am going to be playing it, and I'm definitely going to be streaming it, because, I mean, I'd have to be crazy not to, right? So, all that's coming soon. Uh, this game will be part of the randomly selected uh, games being played on Fridays from now on, because we're going to start doing random games on Fridays. And it's going to be it's going to be a little different. We're going to we're going to pick a random game. Uh, we're going to try some random objective that hopefully will be achievable. And uh, we'll just see if it's a thing we can get done during those sessions. Otherwise, we'll just have fun. And, uh, you know. The sun is on its way down. But yeah, I took a look at, um, <laughs> gonna, gonna take a couple of weeks off and no life the heck out of it. I like the sound of that. Uh, I wish I could do something like that, but unfortunately for me, 
real life has a tendency to get in the way. Um, my kid's definitely not going to let me just do nothing for two weeks. But I'm hoping that he'll enjoy watching me play it. Because sometimes he enjoys watching me play games. Certain games, they have an art style he enjoys. Breath of the Wild, he actually enjoyed me playing that for a while. Um, I don't know if that's a game I'm going to have to buy him his own personal copy of, because Zelda games he doesn't usually get too into. Like, the original Zelda, he's been playing that. But, uh... Like... I would, uh, I would definitely be putting in some serious hours playing it, though. Um, if it comes out during the school year, which highly likely, I mean, that's most of the year, uh, I'll definitely be playing it most of the day while he's in school. So, like, I'm gonna have to plan so that nothing else I need to do occurs during the day and can all happen in the evening. But, uh... Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of uh, Breath of the Wild 2 being played in this household. Now... Because I am retiring this one from our franchise playthrough. Uh, I do want to take a break from Metroid. I wasn't planning on taking a break from Metroid until we finished either Fusion or Prime. But I'm thinking... I'm just going to take a little break from it and play something else for a bit. Because winter's over. And usually winter is when I'm in the mood for Metroid. Don't worry, we'll get back to Metroid Prime and Metroid Fusion before winter again. But uh, I was thinking get back to our Zelda franchise playthrough. And, uh pick up one of those games. Because we have a lot. We have a lot that we can still play through. And I feel like it would be beneficial, you know? Get in a little bit of, uh... A little bit of variety back into the channel. Because it's been a lot of Metroid for a while. <laughs> uh, not that that's a bad thing, necessarily. I mean, Metroid is a great franchise, great game. I love it. I love playing it. But... Like, we've been trying to trying to do the entire franchise in a shot, and I mean, that's nine games. We're like halfway through? Oof. It's a lot of Metroid. So, I think we might play through a Zelda title. Now, keeping in mind, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess might be releasing this fall. And there may be an opportunity to play them on the Switch. Like, what Zelda title would you like to see played through next? If we did Wind Waker or Twilight Princess before they release on the Switch, we'd have to play them on an older console, which I'm not entirely against, but I'm also not going to be in the mood to play them when they come out uh, this fall on the Switch because, like, you know, 
we will have just played them. Uh, we've already done Ocarina of Time, so that one's off. We've done a little bit of um, Majora's Mask on Nintendo 64, but we haven't done a full playthrough, so that one's still on the table. And we could play that on the Switch online service. Uh, a Link to the Past is available on the Switch online service. Uh, a Link Between Worlds, unfortunately, is off the table because that's, uh, that's a 3DS title and I still don't have a way to do that unless it's with emulation. And I still don't want to do emulation on my uh, on my channel. Um, I do like that game though. It's a good game. Um, I I do have it on my DS. Just I want to be able to uh, to if I'm gonna play it for y'all, I want to be able to play it on an actual Nintendo console natively. And broadcast from there. So if we can figure out a way that I'm able to play it on the DS. <laughs> a Link to the Past is, uh, is a fun game. That one is good. It's kind of a long one too. But, like, it's not so overwhelmingly long like that would take probably a couple of weeks to get through for sure so like we would be back in solid Zelda territory for a while not that that's terrible in fact that'd be quite all right with me um I might be able to uh, to get through most of Majora's Mask fairly quickly, though. Like, if we were looking for a short Zelda game, Majora's Mask would probably be the one to go with. If we're looking for a longer game, um, Link to the Past would be a good one. Um, don't neglect the Game Boy titles, though. We can do... Link's Awakening, we can do Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons, we can do, um, let's see, what else was there? Minish Cap, um, Why do I feel like there was another one on the Game Boy Advance that wasn't linked to the past, but I can't remember the name of it now? And I think that's it. I think that I think that is the only one that was on Game Boy Advance, wasn't it? It's just a lot of titles to try to keep track of. Yeah, Link's Awakening can be kind of a long game as well. There's there's quite a few collectibles there. You got heart pieces, you got the secret shells. Ah, uh, okay, let's see here. Where are we on fragments? We have four. Um let's see. Where do I go to? Uh this one. Like, the only one that's coming to mind right now is Minish Cap for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, I know there was the uh, Link to the Past slash Four Swords Adventure, but you can't play the Four Swords Adventure for Game Boy Advance with only one player. So we can't do that one even if I wanted to. I only have the one cartridge. I don't have a second player. We would have to orchestrate some really big event in order for us to do that one. 
on the GameCube, Four Swords Adventure would be possible. Because they do have a one-player mode. Now, another uh, little Nintendo rumor that I'm hearing is that um, Game Boy and Game Boy Advance titles will be coming to the Switch Online service. Which, you know, if you ask me, that's pretty awesome as well. Um... There's, uh, I think there's been some confirmation to that as far as, like, they have the emulators to make it work now. All right, let's do the last one here. I mean, it's not the last upgrade we need. It's just the last level for that one. But uh, I wouldn't mind playing um, Link's Awakening or Link to the Past. Like, Link to the Past we would do on Switch Online service. No problem there. Um, Link's Awakening I could do on the Game Boy Player. And I have the... Uh, and it's even sitting right here in front of me. I have... The DX uh, Link's Awakening. So it's the color version with all the extra fun stuff, including the camera content, the stuff that was made for the Game Boy camera. Uh. So yeah, all the extras are there. Now the only difference between the uh, the chic mask and the stealth mask is the set bonus. <laughs> uh, for our purposes, we're gonna want the night speed bonus though. Um. So yeah. Uh, we are going to play another Zelda title. Because, I mean, it's been a while since we started a new Zelda game. We've been beating the heck out of uh, Breath of the Wild for ages and ages. Oh my gosh, just so, so much time on Breath of the Wild. Uh, almost forgot that we started it as part of the franchise playthroughs that I do. But, um, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's where this one started. And, uh, with this being the last session we're going to do on this one, I think it's time we move on to another Zelda title. Uh, take a little break from Metroid. I will come back to Metroid, so Metroid fans, just, you know, hang in there. It's not the end for Metroid. Samus' adventures will continue, because we're not done. Now, it hasn't been real long since I have personally played Link's Awakening, but it has also been a while since I have beaten Link's Awakening. Because uh, I got the uh, the Zelda 
Game & Watch uh, that they released for the, what was it, 35th anniversary? Uh, wonderful, wonderful little toy. If you can get your hands on one, it's definitely worth it. Uh, they got three titles built into that thing, plus one of the Game & Watch uh, games as well. So I do recommend picking that up. Uh, Link's Awakening is one of them. Oh, I don't think that one landed. Because I don't see a... Yeah, I don't see a beacon... Bummer. You guys got the Game & Watch on that one? I like that Game & Watch. Um, Not that the Super Mario Brothers one wasn't good too, but I really like the Zelda one. Because, you know, I mean, it's, it's Zelda. <laughs> yeah, no, we didn't get no beacon. So there ain't no... Ain't no point in continuing that direction. Let's head over here and camp out. See if we can see another shooting star. But, um... Is that the game we want to go with? Uh... Link's Awakening. Because I wouldn't mind playing that. I wouldn't mind it. There's a lot of fun to be had with that one. All right, I think then uh, it's decided. Our next title, which we will start on Monday, we're going to do uh, Link's Awakening, DX, the Game Boy Color uh, version of it, um, on the Game Boy Player. After we beat that, we'll go back to Metroid, finish up the two games we're playing through there. We are going to try to 100% this game. So, spoiler alerts. <laughs> uh, I don't know the entire game by heart myself, because I think I've only played through it completely twice uh, it is a fun game though oh you know there is one other option we could go with here we could do the remake And which do we want to see for the next playthrough? Do we want to do the original? Well, the DX original on Game Boy. On the Game Boy Player. Or do we want to do the remake on Switch? Because we have both of those options available to us. Knitting Link says remake. I mean, I'm for either one. I I really, 
I don't have a dog in this fight. I'll play either one of them. I have them both. And I found the remake rather enjoyable. I did. Uh, I know it had some criticisms, but for me, it was like, you know, this is... This is a fun revisit. Alright, well, I guess uh, we have a second, so we're gonna go with we're gonna go with the remake on the Switch. Link's Awakening. What's the what's actually kind of funny is the only actual amiibo that I have, like I have those amiibo cards, but the only actual amiibo that I own is the link from uh the remake of Link's Awakening. You know, we need some more wood. And it looks like it's about to be morning soon. Oh, gosh, is that, uh... I'm trying to remember which stable it was. It was the one nearest to the, to these guys here, right? The one that's got all the logs? Yeah. Now what's going to be kind of cool with playing the remake is we're also going to get to have some fun with the Dungeon Maker. I really liked that addition to the remake. Um, like, I know a lot of people complained it was too simple. Wasn't, uh, you know, didn't have enough options, blah, blah, blah. It was... A step in the right direction. And honestly, I liked it. I had fun with it. Um, what I think I may try to do is see if I can recreate some of the original Legend of Zelda dungeons. At least map. You know, at least the maps. I know we're not going to be able to do a room-by-room room match, like the bad guys and the bosses and stuff like that, but we can probably come pretty close on the, uh, on the dungeon design. So we might have some fun with that. See, I've been waiting for them to to do a remake of the original Legend of Zelda. They've been re-releasing it and re-releasing it on literally everything. Forever. But, they've never really done a remake. So I'm thinking the closest we're probably going to get to that is recreating the dungeons in Link's Awakening, uh, the remake for the Switch. Won't be perfect, but it will be cool. Also, it gives us something to experiment with.
Now that does mean we're going to have to look up some dungeon maps. And we're going to have to... Gonna have to make plans for how we intend to get these dungeons to lay out. Uh, we might have to change some of the, uh, like where the locks are and stuff. Maybe. I'm hoping we don't have to go too far off from, uh, from the original setups. I don't think that wolf was expecting me to be able to reach him. But we can have some fun with the with the uh, Link's Awakening remake. We can have some fun with that. So that would be something for us to start on Monday. Uh, Wednesday will be a code session again. And I'm actually kind of looking forward to the code session because we're getting to the point where the game is really starting to take shape. Uh, we have some visuals. We have sprites we can work with. Uh, we can do animation. Uh, the next step is just writing the class declarations for our sprites so that uh, we can interact with them, they can interact with us, they respond to, you know, things like being too close to walls and stuff like that. Um, and also, like, we can fine-tune the sprite cell animations. So I'm thinking uh, the code session should be a really, really fun time. Um, it's going to be a lot of object-oriented programming, though. So, like, a lot of the concepts there might be a little funky because JavaScript can sometimes be weird when it comes to how it handles object-oriented programming. As we saw when we explored the uh, the sound effects, I still have no idea why it wasn't accepting the method uh, as a method, but was trying to make it its own separate object. That didn't make any sense to me.
but we'll we'll be working on you know while we're playing uh Link's Awakening and recreating dungeons from the original Legend of Zelda building our own dungeon in JavaScript and then Friday will be our first random selected you know just some odd title out of my library I don't even know what I'll be playing Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bunch of the titles I have available, um, beat them into a random selector that I'm gonna that I'm gonna write up in probably some Python or something, and uh, whatever title it spits out. That's what I'm going to play. <laughs> it's going to be as fair as possible. It's just going to be whatever the random generator tells me to play. That's what we're going to play. And uh, we'll see if the, we can come up with some interesting ideas for, for, for objectives and challenges to give ourselves. Like, oh, make it through the first couple of levels or see if we can do this random weird thing. What is that? So yeah, sometimes we're going to be playing the game seriously. Sometimes we're going to be just trying to break it. We'll see what happens. Ah, oh, it's an updraft. That's what that is. Wondering what kind of beacon was out here, but that's not a beacon. That's an updraft. But the top of this hill should be a decent uh, vantage point for hunting star fragments. So let's get to the top of this and wait till nightfall and see if we get lucky. Now, I will not be adding to the random selection... Uh, games that I'm hoping to play as part of a franchise playthrough. So, we're probably not going to be playing any Metal Gear. We're probably not going to be playing any Resident Evil. Probably not going to be playing any Batman Arkham games or anything like that. Um, it will narrow down my library considerably, but there are still enough random titles that we should still have... Uh, a pretty good assortment on Fridays. And every Friday, it's just going to be a different game. It's going to be whatever random, randomly selected title the game spits out. Uh, and added to that will be Breath of the Wild and uh, Breath of the Wild Master Mode. Specifically. <laughs> because... Since we're now done with this, uh, we can add it to the random pile. So occasionally we'll still see this one. <laughs> now it might be a little suspicious if it's the first game that comes up on a random play Friday. So I'm just going to say right now, if that happens, it is not planned. It is not pre-planned in any way. It's just, that's just what happens.
Sorry about that. Just had a sneezing fit. Things are still a little dusty around here. A lot of our efforts for uh, spring cleaning and rearranging furniture have kicked up a lot of dust. So we're still dealing with that. I swear I should just buy an air filtration system for down here. But I don't want it to be, like, immediately overwhelmed. <laughs> so, I've been holding off until we've made some progress with the spring cleaning. Oh, worse than the sneezing fit, though. Uh, went to blow my nose. And corner of the tissue stabbed me in the eye. <laughs> oh. And my eyeballs are, are always, like, super, super damn sensitive. Oh. Waiting for my my ridiculously sensitive eye to stop being all like, eh, something touched me. And I can actually, like, see the screen with two eyes. Oh, man. I am an absolute baby when it comes to going to uh, the eye doctor. Like, I even warn them ahead of time that uh, I'm probably going to freak out when they do the eye drops. Like, I will do my best not to. <laughs> but I am not going to take it very well. Because, like, it's the one thing I cannot, cannot do is have things touching my eye. Like, I can touch my eye. Uh, like, if I need to, like, get an eyelash or something out of my eye, I can, you know, I can touch my own eye. But, if something else touches my eye, it's like, no, no, ah, eh, stop. Can't do it. Can't do it. You're not allowed to touch Knitting Link when she's eating, huh? <laughs> yeah, things touch my eye just absolutely the worst. And to make matters worse, I have eye problems. Like, I need glasses. Uh, my eyelashes over the last couple of years have started growing in in weird directions, which... That's a thing. Um, they're also hypersensitive to, like, dust and pet dander. And, of course, I'm living with two cats. <laughs> so, like... My eyes are constantly, constantly hating me for everything. But, you know... <laughs> yeah, I can't do contacts. Um... I've been told my prescription would be absolutely fine for contacts, but wearing them 
just weirds me out because it's like this is something that sits on my eyeball all day <laughs> you know and i feel like just knowing that it's there is going to be enough to bother me even if it is helping my vision uh i tolerate glasses because they're near my eye but not touching my eye you know I don't think I would do well with contacts. I really don't. I certainly would not do well with those contacts that, like, the the, the costume contacts that cover the whole eye. Absolutely would not tolerate those. Yeah, see, I would never be able to get past that because it would feel weird for, like, the first little bit. And I would just be like, nope, nope, we're not doing this. They're gone. They're out. I would never adapt <laughs> because I would never be able to, to let them sit long enough for my eye to get comfortable with that. Um... There's a magic trick that I would absolutely love to be able to do. But this trick requires literally putting something in my eye. And there's just no way. Absolutely no way. Uh, I've seen this trick performed. I immensely enjoy this trick. It gives me the heebie-jeebies just watching it. But I enjoy the trick. I wish I could do the trick. See, I don't even think it would be a matter of, like, thickness. That would be the issue. I think it's just something touching my eye. Would be the thing. That would bug me. Because anything touching my eye just annoys the hell out of me. Did it go? <laughs> it fell through. <laughs> it fell through the thing. <laughs> it fell through the thing. All right, that was weird. It fell through the ground and into the world. We were still able to pick it up, though. So we still got it. Still got it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. No, that was... I had to drop down underneath. And see where it, uh where it had gotten to, but yeah, that was weird. That was very weird. But yeah, my eyes are so hypersensitive, like... <laughs> any amount of, like, lint or dust in the air, like, the tiniest little speck of it, even touches my eye. 
I have to flush it out with drops. Uh, it's insane. And, like, your eye should naturally be able to handle, like, some level of that stuff. Like, the bigger stuff I can get, you kind of got to, you know, you got to fish that out. But, like, you have eyelashes, you have tears, this should flush out, you know, normal stuff. I have such an issue with it, though. It's just, it's, it's ridiculous. But yeah, that star fragment disappearing into the, uh... Into the ground. That was definitely odd. You don't see that every day. <laughs> Do not see that every day. Oh, let's set up a little campfire. Uh, that one. There we go. Man, I get an eyelash under my eyelid, and it feels like I'm being stabbed in the eye with a knife. I could not imagine what having an eyelash under a contact is going to feel like. Like, that just, that's a no for me. Right there. That's just no. <laughs> mm -mm. And I'm talking just... Normal eyelash. Normally, the way it gets into your eye. You know, not even like really under the lid, but like just it's on the eye, getting pushed around by the eyelid as you're blinking. Now, it feels like I'm being stabbed in the eye with a knife. I do not do well with things touching my eye at all. I definitely would not want to experience an eyelash under a contact. Yeah, that sounds horrible, Knitting Link. Absolutely terrible. I would not be... I, I would not sit still through that. I would not be able to. Like, I understand there's really not much choice. Kind of just have to. <laughs> but... No, no, I would... I would be freaking out the whole time. It's a beautiful clear night. Hopefully we get a we get a we get a shooting star. Yeah. I mean I know it's only a half moon, but I don't think the star fragments are really tied to the full moons. Cause that just has not been my experience. So Maybe we'll get one.
had to drill a steel fragment out of his eye? <laughs> I hope not. Oh, it was his eye. Ew. Ew. Yeah, no, I would, I would, I would, I would. I'm pretty sure at that point, I would just shut down. Like, I would be out. Lose consciousness. Just be like, nope. Checking out here. Y'all have fun with that. Cause yeah, no, that would that would be awful, absolutely awful. We're talking worst case scenario. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm done. Bye. And then just coma. <laughs> Yeah, there is no universe where I am staying conscious through that kind of procedure. None. I don't care what kind of anesthetic they could give me. I don't care what kind of drugs they could put me on. You're drilling into my eye and I'm expected to not freak out? No. That's never happening. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That is me being done with life, with the with the whole existence experiment. Nope, it's a failure. Just, just no, absolutely not. Get back here. There we go. Ah, dead. Did it just get really dark, or is it just me? Yeah, I don't know about that, man. Like, my eyes get real goddamn sensitive when it comes to things touching them. So, like... You, maybe you're not supposed to? But, like, I have all kinds of sensitivity with my eyes. Like, a, a, a light breeze can blow on my eye. I'm gonna feel that. It's gonna tear up. It's gonna be all like, no, nah, stop touching my eye. Like, it's, it's horrible. Like, I don't know where the nerve endings stop in the eye construction. But... Like, wherever there is no no nerve endings and you're not supposed to be able to feel stuff, it's, it's, uh, it's not nearly soon enough. <laughs> like, it's, it's, like, they can say, oh, there's no nerve endings in your eye. No, no I, I, there's enough nerve endings in my eye tissue. I can tell you that much. There's enough of them. That uh, I'm going to feel it. It's going to not be good. And uh, whatever you do to that sort of stuff. I've just... You try to do any kind of anything. I am not going to sit well for that. Put it away instead of, uh... Here we go, and drop. Hi, 
And I'm on fire! Okay, it's calmed down. Yeah, no, it definitely feels like you have nerve endings everywhere in your eye. Or at least if it does to me. Uh, okay, one thing I do know is we do not get star fragments in the rain. Or at least I never have. Yeah, the surface is super dang sensitive. And it's sensitive enough to me that it doesn't matter, like, what else you plan on doing with the eye. Like, you gotta go through the surface, and it's sensitive enough to be like, no. <laughs> No, no. A uh, sense of feel? Yes, that is a thing. I think. I'm pretty sure. Like, it might not seem like it should be a thing. But it's it's definitely a thing, because touch is one of the senses, right? Has to be. And at least in English, touch and feel are almost entirely interchangeable. <laughs> Unless there are some, like, you know, English professors out there who know something I don't. But I feel like those two words are almost entirely interchangeable. I get you can touch a thing without feeling it, and you can feel things without touching them, but to feel something, you know, when you touch it, you also feel it. When you when you feel it, you are touching it. Like, you know, oh, feel this fabric. How do I do that if I'm not going to touch it? <laughs> you know? Touch this. What does it feel like? It feels hot or cold. It's fuzzy or it's smooth or, you know. Yeah, see, it's so interchangeable. Even in other languages, they're the same stupid word. <laughs> Seems to me like sense of feel is a phrase that should make sense. I mean, this seems like it'd be a great night for there to be a star fragment, right? I know we don't get star fragments every night, but... The game agrees!
now we just gotta get there by four o'clock. Or is it five? Whatever sunrise is in this game. <laughs> Y'all seem to have this handled. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take off. There we go. Good luck with uh, whatever you got going on there. All right. Y'all are welcome. Resume your lives. Oh, let's see. You don't have any word for icky. How do you don't how do you not have a word for icky? I mean icky and gross are pretty interchangeable. Like do you not have a word for gross? That is very strange. That is very strange. Now, I know the German language has words for, like, everything. Like, just literally every everything. Like... They probably even have a word specifically for... The kind of melancholy feeling you get on a rainy Tuesday afternoon. But only specifically that feeling. <laughs> like they got a word for um, the sense that other people have complete lives. Uh, in English, I don't think we have just a word for that. <laughs> I had read an article on <clears throat> words other languages have that the English language needs to adopt because... Like, we're, we're just missing a word for it. And if I remember right, the sense that uh, other people are living full existences, that sensation of the realization of that has a word, but in English... We don't have just a word for that.
we have phrases that you can use to describe that feeling. But no just simple word for that. We got half a dozen words for icky, though, <laughs> in English. There's icky, there's gross, disgusting, unpleasant. Uh. Probably a few others, but I've, I've run out of them, <laughs> so... Like, the day before yesterday. I think there's a word for that in some other languages. And it's just, like, one word. In English, it's just the day before yesterday. Which is a mouthful. <clears throat> Forgar, I probably totally butchered that because I have no idea what the what the little little things over the uh, the vowels are doing to the sounds because I don't I don't know Swedish. Yeah, the day after tomorrow, that's another one they've got, uh, and, like, there's, there's actually quite a few languages that they have just one word for that, but in English, we don't have that. We have to string together long, complicated phrases to just say, the day after tomorrow. Uh, I don't think we're going to get a star fragment. Looks like it's going to rain until just about morning. So let us... Let's do that. Oh, the weather looks like it's going to be even worse on this night. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Hey, they can be compound words. We don't even have compound words uh, in English to describe the day before yesterday and the day after tomorrow. Because otherwise we would use them. <laughs> like the closest, I think... Yeah, no, that would even be a nonsensical word that doesn't... But I was thinking, like, yestermorrow, but, like, no. That's, you know, the tomorrow of yesterday, which is today. Which is just a complicated way of saying 
today. <laughs> so no, even that wouldn't work. Like we just we have no phrase for that. We have or we have no word for that, even a compound word. So we're um yeah. Yeah, there's a rave happening on the mountain. Yeah, no, this is this is not our night for weather. Well, looks like it's also gonna rain. Let's see if we can change it by moving to a different location. We'll have to put on some pants when we get there. Maybe a coat too. does not look like it has improved the weather much. <clears throat> We're not seeing a starry sky. Okay, now this guy is starting to clear up. Oh, we've gone too far.
Oh, she wasn't actually planning on taking a class. She was just going to teach herself Swedish. <laughs> like, she has been learning phrases and stuff, but, like, trying to keep up with her, like, I'm not able to because I have no idea where she's learning to the, the phrases and stuff she's learning. <laughs> like, I thought she had intended to, like, take a class or something, but... No, apparently not. Because at least with a class, like, it's something we could have done together, which would have made sense for the whole, oh, you want someone to learn Swedish with you so you have someone to talk to. Because, you know, if you're taking a class, you can take it at the same pace, you'll be on the same page, you'll understand the same words. No, there's none of that going on. <laughs> none of that. Which has been kind of annoying. <laughs> But she'll still insist on communicating in Swedish. And I'm just forced to copy everything she says into uh, Bing Translator to understand what the heck she's saying. And then when I respond, I respond by typing the, the, the thing that I'm saying in English into Bing Translator, translating it to Swedish, and then copying that and sending that to her. Basically, it's just a whole lot of extra steps. <laughs> and it's... It's kind of kind of annoying, actually. Uh, at this point, we may as well just be speaking Pig Latin, because it, it's, you know... <laughs> At least I'm not actually learning any Swedish that way. I, mean, I might still take the Udemy course or something, or uh, uh, Duolingo. Because then I could at least understand, like, some of the grammar and stuff to it. So if I do have to resort to a translator, I can tell sort of to an extent if what I'm saying at least makes grammatic sense <laughs> at all. Maybe. Might not recognize what all the words mean, but... Through context, I might be able to determine if what I'm trying to say is actually coming across properly. Oh, yeah. Like, that's a problem in a lot of languages. Uh, if I remember right, um, Mandarin... Uh, the word for mother and horse are literally just infliction on the way you're pronouncing the word. If I remember right. And you really don't want to be mispronouncing it. Because <laughs> uh, you, you'll, be, you'll be throwing around some insults there. Definitely making some people very unhappy with you. If you get those wrong.
But yeah, I wish you would just decide on a class that we could both take. If she really wants someone to learn it with, because... Uh... At least then... Like, I would not have to be there for when she's learning the random phrases from whichever other friend of hers is speaking Swedish or whatever random person she runs into that speaks Swedish because honestly I think where she's learning it now is Discord uh, some server for some guild for some game she plays on Xbox uh, probably, uh, probably Elder Scrolls and it's just random phrases that her guildmates decide to teach her. And, I mean, they could be messing with her as far as, like, what the words actually mean. Uh, there's not really going to be a whole lot of consistency to, like, you know, make, having her learn things that are going to be useful. I mean, I doubt they're really going to focus much on the grammar. Ah, <laughs> uh, we're already down here. She's not really much of a, uh, you know, institutional learning experience kind of person, though. That's always been her biggest issue. I think she has ADHD. And that's why she just was never able to... To work with that kind of setting. Oh, hey, it finally stopped raining. Okay, let's, let's light another fire. Yeah, she's more of a, uh, she needs to be working with another person for the lessons. What? What is this? I don't know that I've ever seen an actual rainbow in this game before. Have you guys ever seen this? That's kind of cool. And it's gone. Huh. I don't know that I've ever seen a rainbow in this game.
So that's kind of the way it is when you travel just about anywhere. Uh, if, if it is obvious that you are terrible at the native language, most places they'll just revert to speaking to you in English or trying to speak to you in English if they know English. And in a lot of places, English gets taught as a second language. Which is funny because English is really dumb. <laughs> uh, it has a lot of stuff that doesn't make a lot of sense. It's not one of the easier languages to learn. Spanish would make more sense because Spanish... Uh, very rarely are you straying from the, the, the ground rules that they lay in place, like, for, you know, from the beginning lessons. Uh, but English... See, I hardly ever see the, the rainbows. That, I think, was the first rainbow I have encountered in this entire game. And I've played through it a few times now. <laughs> But, um, yeah, uh, French has some weirdness to it, too, though. I can't really speak for Italian because I don't speak Italian. Um, I don't speak French either, but I've, I've seen enough of French to know that there's some, there's some oddities in that language, but I feel like English can kind of top what what uh, the French language can do as far as weirdness because there's just a lot of stuff that don't make sense man we're seeing this guy everywhere aren't we But I have been told English can be one of the most difficult languages to learn just because of some of the dumb ways that it will uh, deviate from its own rules. We are going to want to be able to run fast. Get out of the way, horsey. It kicked me. How are you still hitting me? I'm zigzagging. The AI is cheating. Mom! I do have a little experience learning other languages, but not enough experience learning other languages where I actually can speak another language terribly well. I took three years of Spanish, and only thing I'm capable of saying is, Yo hablo español muy mal. And I'm probably not even pronouncing that right. I took a semester of Mandarin. What? 
I can say, uh, Wo Jiao Oyong Jie. My name is Forever Outstanding Ox. <laughs> Which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, I know, but that's the thing I know how to say. Um, I took a year of Arabic, and I can't speak a word of Arabic without horribly offending somebody, I'm sure, because my pronunciation in Arabic is god-awful. I am, I am, I know enough to know that I'm bad at it. <laughs> that's, that's where I'm at with learning languages. Wow, it's really busy over here with these guys. Am I near the castle? I'm near the castle. That's why. Okay. That makes sense. Where are we at for star fragments? Three? What do I need for my next upgrade? I don't even remember. Oh. Programming languages, I'm pretty good at learning those. But... There's a different sort of rule set for, you know, programming language grammar and such that, uh... Doesn't really a doesn't really translate when learning languages uh, in other, uh, well, other languages, spoken languages. One's already maxed. Oh, uh, that one we got a ways to go. So let's max this one out. Alright, so there's one more Divine Helm we've got to max out. And then there's all of the uh, Amiibo Drop Link armor sets. Classic Zelda sets. We still have one more fragment? Okay, let's see. Uh, time, wind, twilight. All right, looks like we're working on sky next. Trying to get them all to at least level one, right? Or to at least one star.
Yeah, we just got to get that one up two more levels. Uh, all of these need to be brought up several, several levels. Uh, these are done. But these need a lot of star fragments. A lot of star fragments. So they put things like double rainbows in this game, huh? Yeah, I think that's weird. I, I do not remember ever seeing a rainbow until today. In the game. I mean, I've seen rainbows in real life and stuff. Let's see. Sit until night. <sighs> and it's raining. The weather just does not want to cooperate. Let's see if maybe going to a different tower will uh, make things better. Cloudy. Uh, I don't think we're going to see a whole lot if it's cloudy. Let's try over here. better now hopefully oh uh, it's a blood moon I mean maybe we'll still get a shooting star but I don't think I've ever gotten one 
while there's been a blood moon. That doesn't mean it can't happen. Just that I don't think I've ever experienced that. Otherwise, it's a lovely night for, uh, for stargazing. If they'd stop shooting at me. Oh, jeez. Do not trample me, horses. If they bring the Blood Moon back in Breath of the Wild 2, I hope they make that skippable. <laughs> the little cutscene there that they do every time. Just make it skippable. Or, you know, after the first couple of times, just, you know, don't have the cutscene anymore. It just kind of interrupts the flow of everything. Well, we got a shooting star on the same night. It's a blood moon. We just had to wait for the... Uh, for the cutscene to be over. So that's not too bad. Yay! All right, let's see.
And that grandeur of Boone's not really uh, so much a being as a statue, but uh, sure. Uh, I have not. At least not much. I mean, I think we've been back to that area, but I don't think I've specifically stopped to, like, see if the there's anything else weird about the ghost mushroom. Or if there's anything more we can do with it. I also have not seen it listed on any of the glitches or weird buggy sites, you know, that, that talk about the the weird stuff in Breath of the Wild. So I don't know if this is something unique to our playthrough on this channel or... If it's just my cartridge, or if I'm just the only person who's ever run into this. I don't know. Have you guys run into this on yours? I know you have this game. Rivali's Gale is now ready. If I remember right, on that day, like, it's just, it's, it's drawn in, but, like, it doesn't actually have any collision to it. You can just walk right through it. Like, it's just not there. So y'all don't have a weird mushroom that you just phase right through when you land on it? In your game? Because I sure do in mine. It's very odd. Let's see if we get a... Get a star fragment here. It's a nice clear night. We have... The best view. And we'll go visit the weird mushroom again. See if it's still, uh... Because I've got it marked. I still have it marked. It's right there. So we can find it again.
Well, hello, uh, Zanyatoa. Welcome to the chat. Nice. I don't think we're getting a star fragment tonight. Usually it's fallen by two. Yep, Star Fragment Farming. We have pretty much beaten the heck out of this game. Uh, I've been playing it since... I don't even remember when I started. Why am I Star Farming? Because it's the only thing I have left to do in this game. <laughs> like, literally the only thing left. We've even explored glitches and... All kinds of stuff. There's genuinely just nothing else. Oh no, we did that. In fact, that was two sessions ago we were doing that. I just chose not to clone a bunch of star fragments in order to... Uh, level up the gear that I have left to go. Because this is all I've got left to upgrade for gear. And I said if I was going to cheat, I wasn't going to, you know, I wasn't going to cheat in any way that was going to be significant. And I feel like upgrading my armor, my gear, uh, by cloning a bunch of star fragments, that would be cheating. <laughs> that would actually be cheating. If I was done collecting star fragments, oh, I'd had no problem. We could we could clone the heck out of them because it'd be inconsequential at that point. But we did try cloning a couple of ancient core. Uh, we tried cloning a couple of other things. We got it to work. We were able to do the menu overloading. And we had no problem with that. Uh, we haven't explored, like, every single glitch there is in the game because a lot of them require practice. And I don't have the skill necessary to, uh, to pull it off. But we explored quite a few of them. And I kind of want to leave there to be something for us to do when we randomly come back to this when it comes up in the, uh, the random game selector on Fridays because I'm adding this to uh, to my random Friday plays because Fridays from now on I'm just going to pick a random title and play it and actually I'm going to have a random generator pick a title and play that Right now, we want to see which one of these is fake. Because one of these is fake. Not that one.
That one's real. Huh. Pretty sure it was this one. Is my is is my chat filter censoring your uh, your ability to express yourself, Knitting Link? Well, gang, I am pretty sure... ...that this was the weird one. But as you can see, I'm not falling through it this time. I'm not sure. Either that or I have the wrong one marked, but I don't think I have the wrong one marked because I'm pretty sure that that was the one. Well, that one's solid. Weird. It's no longer a ghost shroom. So bizarre. Because I remember we fell just right through it.
Rivali's Gale is now ready. I mean, the only thing I can think of is it must have been a fluke. You know, must have been a, just a one-time thing. I don't know. I mean, they all seem pretty solid now. Well, I'm a little sad. R.I.P. Ghost Mushroom. I don't know if it, it would have fixed itself after watching one of my coding streams. Uh, it might have, uh, it might have ended itself after one of my coding streams. <laughs> My coding streams usually end with me being super frustrated because the thing I'm trying to do isn't working for, like, the past hour. And then, like, five minutes before I'm ready to just absolutely give up and call it and be done for the day, I, I figure out what's wrong and it works. So, you know... An hour of experimentation and me talking about what we're trying to do, followed by an hour of trying to figure out why the thing we're trying to do isn't working. And then uh, the last couple of minutes is the thing finally works because of some stupid thing that uh, like I apparently didn't realize I had done. That's usually how my coding sessions go. If anyone learns anything, if anyone learns anything from my coding sessions, I will be very, very surprised. Uh, I know I frame them as being a tutorial, but it's more a tutorial in this is what it's actually like to develop a program. Because a lot of, uh, a lot of tutorials, they kind of gloss over the um, the trial and error, the banging your head against the wall, trying to figure out why things aren't working, exploring different solutions and options, and uh, trying to find what error codes mean and stuff like that. Um, but that's because every tutorial has been prepared in advance. Like, they've gone through the trouble of building the thing they're showing you how to build, and they cut out all of the stuff where it's not working. And I feel like that's misleading to young developers because they don't realize that uh, when they get to building their own projects, they're going to struggle. Like, they're just going to struggle. It's part of... It's part of the development process. You can't build something completely from your own brain without running into some issues. And like some tutorials still spend a little bit on, oh, if you can't figure out how it works, here's how you use your debugging tools and blah, 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 blah. And they'll stage an error. Hey, some bird eggs. You know, so that, uh, you know, they can show you how to go about fixing it. But that's easy to do when you know what the error is. If you know what's broken, it's easy to figure out how to go about fixing it. 
But the the thing we're building, the website we're building, uh, this is all stuff. Like I know how to do this stuff, but like the game we're making, I've never made this game. I've never built this particular thing before. Have I built websites before? Yes. Have I built games in JavaScript before? Yes. But specifically, have I built a angry green slime cube uh, trying to navigate a maze full of dust bunnies to get to the hidden exit uh, kind of game in JavaScript? No, I have not. In fact, it was just, like, a couple weeks ago that I was making the sprite files for that game so that I would have something to work with. So, we're gonna run into... we're gonna run into problems. We're gonna run into a lot of problems building the game. But it's genuine game development, you know? the real deal what it's supposed to look like not we're gonna build a clone of a game that's already been made and we already know what the code should look like and what it's supposed to do and whatnot no we're 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 showing this from the beginning from the true beginnings going through the whole real process of building a game warts and all Because when I did uh, moderation for Free Code Camp uh, Earth, the Facebook group, and uh, something I see now in like Reddit forums and stuff um, for new developers, the thing they're always running into is, okay, I now know X, Y, and Z, but I still don't know how to start my own project. I still don't know how to build my own things. And I feel like if you're if you've learned a language but you still can't speak it, have you really learned a language? I mean, you're aware of how sentences should be structured and whatnot, but if you can't answer questions that are posed to you in that language, you haven't learned that language. You've learned about that language, which is a good start. It's only when you can get some use out of it, some kind of functionality that you've actually learned to use it. But I've also seen a lot of tutorials where they depend on a coder having some kind of aha moment in figuring out how JavaScript works. And could you just imagine that in another profession? Like, imagine you're a brain surgeon. And you're learning how to perform some kind of complicated brain surgery procedure. Uh, you're, you have to depend upon having some kind of aha moment before you finally get it. Like, I would be worried. I would genuinely be worried. 
Oh, uh, you guys are done for the day? Well, you have a good rest of your day. I should probably get out of here, too, because it's about lunchtime for me. But yeah, I think our ghost mushroom has um, has fixed itself and is no longer a ghosty mushroom. And uh, we'll see more Breath of the Wild randomly. Assuming the random generator ever picks that one. Uh, Fridays will be a random play. And next week, as promised, we will be playing... The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening Remake for the Nintendo Switch. We'll be doing a 100% playthrough on that, plus some dungeon building. So that'll be fun. We're, uh... We'll be starting a new... new game there. Um, we'll be getting back to playing Metroid after we've beaten... Uh, The Legend of Zelda, uh, Link's Awakening on Switch. We just need a break from it, because <laughs> we've played so much Metroid. Um, but we'll be doing random games on Fridays, coding sessions every other Wednesday. Um, we're currently working on that JavaScript game that I was talking about. Uh, once we finish that, though, we will get back to building things with Python. Uh, we're going to start talking about sockets. We're going to start talking about um, databases. We're going to start talking about uh, third-party packages like Pygame, so you can make your own retro games for your computer. We're going to have a lot of fun with that. That's what's coming for the channel. Uh, thank you, Knitting Link and Ube, for, uh, for joining us today. Uh, thanks everyone else who's been lurking and viewing, if there are any of you out there. You know, always feel free to say hi in the chat. We don't mind it. But y'all have a great one. Thanks for joining me for some star fragment farming today. We did not get a whole lot, but we got a little bit accomplished. So, you know, not too bad. Not too bad. Where are we at for star fragments right now, anyway? One. We have one star fragment. That's enough to upgrade a thing! So let's go upgrade a thing. <laughs> but yeah, you guys have a great weekend. And, uh... Yeah, we'll see you next week for some more Legend of Zelda fun. All kinds of good stuff coming. Upgrade one piece of gear and then we'll uh we'll get the heck out of here. Tunic? Tunic of the Sky? Is that what's next? Tunic of the Sky! Yes, please. Yes, we've all heard about the set bonuses by now. If we haven't heard about the set bonuses by now, we're doing something seriously wrong.
All right, and as I said, that is going to do it for me today. Uh, this game is now going to be part of the random selection for Fridays. Uh, star Fragment hunting, or Star Fragment farming, will be a thing we're going to continue to do on those Fridays when this game comes up. Uh, we're also adding Master Mode as any second selection um for this game so like it may come up we're gonna play normal mode so we'll either do some glitch testing or star fragment farming or it'll come up as master mode in which case we'll just pick up where we left off playing through the master mode and um yeah that's gonna be fun but starting next week the legend of zelda Link's Awakening Remake uh, for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, we'll be starting that one, doing a 100% playthrough, followed by some dungeon building. We're going to try to recreate some of the classic Legend of Zelda dungeons as close as we can within reason. So, if you're interested in that kind of thing, that's what we're going to be doing every Monday and every other Wednesday. Uh, every Wednesday that isn't going to be played, uh, that we're not going to be playing Zelda, we're going to be doing a code session, working on front-end development right now, uh, front-end web development, learning HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Uh, we're currently building, a, a a game that we can play in our browser. And when we're done with that, we'll get back into uh, some Python coding, because that's always fun. Um, previously on that, we've built a create, read, update, delete sort of uh, program. Uh, we're going to be utilizing that to help build resources for later projects. So... Um, Yep, and then Fridays, random games. Just I have I have a massive library of games. I want to be able to play some of these other games, but I don't really want to have to do like a full 100% playthrough of every game I own because we will never get there. <laughs> we don't have that kind of time. Um 100%ing every single game I own would probably take 10 lifetimes at least. Uh, I have a lot of games. I have a lot of games. Um, I'm always buying games when they're on sale, and, uh, I often hit up, like, the Humble Bundle ones where you get, like, just a whole buttload of games for super, super cheap. Um, developer sales, I love checking those out. You can get entire franchises for pennies. Uh... Yeah, um, so yeah, over the years, built up quite a collection. I want to be able to provide as much interesting content for my channel as possible so that there's always something new and that we're not getting bored. Uh, though lately we've been mostly focusing on the Legend of Zelda and Metroid franchises because we're trying to do franchise playthroughs specifically of the Legend of Zelda and Metroid. Uh, we'll be doing other franchises later, so those titles will not be part of the random selections on Fridays. But, um, don't worry. If you're wondering why you're not seeing, like, Batman Arkham Knight ever pop up in the random plays on Fridays, it's because that's going to be a franchise play. We're going to play that on franchise. When we get to those, I don't know if we're going to do 100%, because that's a lot of Riddler trophies. I mean, I know we did all of the Korok seeds for this one, but oh my god. <laughs> that was so much work. So much work. Uh, like I said, we've been playing this for a long time. I think we started this in November? Was it November? I don't even remember when we started this. It's been that long. But... Uh, this has been a really fun game to play. 
Uh, I'm kind of glad to be putting it on the back burner now and exploring some other stuff, though. Uh, and as I said, this fall, if the rumors prove to be true and we get to see uh, re-releases of um, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess come to the Switch, because those rumors are kicking around out there, if they prove to be true, we're going to be playing them on this channel. So, um, that's something to look forward to. When Breath of the Wild 2 finally drops, we'll be playing that as well, because of course we're going to play that. It would be crazy not to. So, uh, lots of fun stuff for us to look forward to. I hope I'll see y'all there. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day.